Angels surround them. A sakina, mercy, mercy, tranquility descends upon their hearts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them with those that are with Him. Think about that for a moment. Just being in a place where Allah's name is being mentioned, where Allah is being talked about. There's a certain peace of mind that comes. There's a certain tranquility of the heart that comes. And you don't get that feeling anywhere else. You don't get that anywhere else. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly reminds you over and over and over again. And I'll ask each and every single one of you with the question that Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah asked. He said, وَمِنْ أَعْجَبَ الْعَجَبِ He said from the, from the strangest of things, أَن تَذُوقَ الْعَذَابِ عِنْدَ تَعَلُّقِ الْقَلْبِ بِغَيْرِهِ ثُمَّ لَا تَهْرَبُ مِنْهُ إِلَى, إلى نَعِيمِ الْإِقْبَالِ وَالْإِنَابَةِ إِلَيْهِ He said, it's strange. That a person tastes the torture of having his heart attached to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he doesn't run away from that thing which causes him that torturous feeling to the blessing, to the peace of mind that comes with turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembering Him and supplicating Him. And, and, and it's a very simple question. The feeling that you have after sitting in a gathering where Allah wasn't mentioned, or being in a place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wasn't mentioned, where there was gossip and nonsense being talked about for hours and hours, that feeling that you have, does it in any way, shape, or form equal the feeling that you have after you've attended a good halaqa, Or after you've attended a salah in which you made your heart attentive, in which you attached your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many times we treat religion as just that, just an obligation to get out of the way. And we don't look to it as a source of peace of mind and as a source of peace of heart. And then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why isn't my salah making me feel better? I feel like my heart is dead. How come I don't feel anything when I pray? How come I don't feel anything whenever I hear these things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the question is really addressed back to you. What have you given to your salah in order for your salah to make you feel better? What have you given to your religion for it to give you that sense of peace and tranquility? You know, I remember, and, and I know, mashallah, this is a masjid in which many people take shahada. And many people embrace Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this masjid. I mean, it's announced every single week, right? Sister so-and-so has accepted Islam. Brother so-and-so has accepted Islam. And I remember one time I was giving shahada to someone. And I see, mashallah, we have a lot of revert brothers and sisters here. And as that person, it was a young girl, probably 19 years old, was taking her shahada and expressing that testimony for the first time, she was breaking down in tears. And then there was another woman that was in her 60s that was breaking down in tears as well. And so subhanallah, she came to me afterwards, the woman, the older woman that broke down in tears, and she said, Imam, do you know why I was crying? I said, why? She said, because I've been saying Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah for 64 years. And I've never once cried over it. I've said it my entire life and it never brought me to tears. That's the first time she's saying it. And it's bringing her to tears. Why? Because of what she gave to that shahada. What she put on the table for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The trust she had in La ilaha illallah Muhammadan Rasulullah. That this is life. That what I'm about to say is going to change my entire life. It's possibly going to alienate me from my family. It's possibly going to hurt my reputation. I'm going to lose friends over this. I'm going to not only have to change culture, but I'm going to have to change my entire lifestyle. For la ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. And by them being here to testify that, they're saying it's worth it. So it means more to them when they say it. It means more. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us, and Imam al-Qayyim rahimahullah says very beautifully, you know when we enter into our salah, and then we turn away to all of these different things, the things that occupy our minds and occupy our hearts. When we're thinking about what's coming after the salah, or what happened before the salah. And Imam Al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, إِذَا دَخَلَ الْعَبْدُ فِي الصَّلَاةِ When a person enters into his prayer, ثُمَّ الْتَفَتَ And then he turns away spiritually from his prayer. 
He doesn't physically turn away, but his heart is all, his heart is in a totally different place. His mind is in a totally different place. قال الله عز وجل الله سبحانه وتعالى says to him يا عبدي oh my servant إلى أين where are you going إلى خير مني are you turning to something better than me have you found something that is more deserving of your attention right now than me have you found something that's going to give you peace of mind and going to give you tranquility and going to settle your heart that is better than me? Can you imagine? You're already only giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a few moments of your day. What are you bringing to that prayer? And from the, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we learn that after he finishes his salah, he says, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam تَبَارَكْتَ يَا ذَا الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ It's an expression, subhanAllah, such a powerful expression that the Prophet ﷺ said after every single prayer, O oh Allah, You are peace. You are the source of peace. From You alone comes peace, comes salam. SubhanAllah, think about that. Because the Prophet ﷺ wasn't going to his prayer to get it over with. The Prophet ﷺ was going to his prayer for peace. Arihna biha ya Bilal. Comfort us with it, O Bilal. And the Prophet ﷺ turned towards Salah. And the way that the Prophet ﷺ turned to Allah in prayer made it rewardable not just in the hereafter but in this dunya as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly invites us. And the Prophet ﷺ says, مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرُ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرُ اللَّهِ مِثْلُ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّتِ The example of the one who remembers Allah and the one who doesn't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like the example of the living and the dead. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اسْتَجِيبُوا لِلَّهِ وَلِلْرَسُولِ إِذَا دَعَاكُمْ لِمَا يُحْيِيكُمْ O oh, you who believe, answer the call of Allah and His Messenger when they call you to that which gives you life. Because without it, you don't have life. And whether it's a place, like a marketplace or a club or whatever it is where Allah is not being mentioned, or whether it's your heart. As Imam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, that dhikr, the remembrance of Allah to the heart, is like water is to a fish. It's your oxygen. If you don't have it, you're not breathing. You're not living anymore. You're not experiencing true life. How many people on the day of Black Friday, and ironically, and I'm sure you had a khutbah about this, but ironically, right after expressing thanks for what they already have, go out and camp out in front of stores, in front of different places, for hours and hours and hours to get a hold of a deal on, on some kind of gaming console or some kind of product, because that product, that gaming console, supposedly is going to give you happiness. And that's the first thing shaitan does is he creates these insecurities, these vulnerabilities, and then he exploits them and tells you, look, I've got a product that can solve your problem. You know, in essence, that's what marketing is, right? Exploiting people's insecurities and vulnerabilities. And shaitan is a master of that. Feeling down about your looks? Here's a product. I'll show you a commercial of a person that's standing there and that's miserable. And then all of a sudden, a product pops up, you know, body spray, cologne, and then you, you're in this amazing place all of a sudden, and you're smiling and everything is all good, and, and all of a sudden everyone's attracted to you. You're beautiful now. Feeling down on your bills, and you know, they show you someone who's depressed and checking the mail and things of that sort. Well, maybe you should try this. Right? SubhanAllah, create that insecurity, and create that vulnerability, and create that need, and then exploit it. And you know what the sad thing is, dear brothers and sisters, is that a lot of times we complain that we're not feeling alive. And I want you to think about this for a moment. How many people will spend tonight, Friday night, and tomorrow night, Saturday night, wasting themselves away at a club or at a bar or in some kind of party, trying to feel alive? And you could be sitting here listening to قَالَ Allah and قَالَ رَسُولُ Allah, Allah says and the Messenger says for one hour, and I guarantee you, you feel more alive than them. How many people are trying to feel alive? 
And subhanAllah, the, the idea here is turning towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understanding that what Allah can give you, no one else can give you. As Imam Al-Qayyim rahimahullah said very beautifully, that the only one who shaitan can appeal to is the one for whom Allah is not enough. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافٍ abda. Isn't Allah enough for His servants? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testifies in the Qur'an, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْ That they are pleased with Allah and Allah is pleased with them. And one of the ways of being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being pleased with the legislation of Allah. Being pleased with what Allah has given you with Islam. Being pleased with the restrictions that Allah has given you because understanding those restrictions are for you. Those restrictions are to make you live a better life. Those restrictions are for your own good. And we have many of our youth who look out, and many Muslims who look out of the window sometimes and say, man, I wish I could not be Muslim just for one day. I wish I could enjoy it just today. Putting out there, I mean, many of us, some people are going to try to act holier than thou, but many of us indeed really say, um, What time is this program going to end so that maybe I can join my friends out there in the world? What time is this going to finish so that, okay, let me just do this, let me just pray so that I can join my friends later, let me just do this today so that tomorrow I don't have to do it. It's like, it's just some, it's like, something that we do just to do it for the sake of doing not because we want to do it and i like the example he's given of maybe going out there into the world a bit clubbing between clubbing and actually uh dedicating your time to god yes you're going to go clubbing yes it's going to be fun it's going to be nice you're going to have a good time at the end of the day it's draining your pockets it's draining your energy and by the end of the day you're going to come back home tired and you just need a lot to revive yourself again wow when you tend to prayer or dedicate your time or your day to praying god doing good things or relaxing whatever the case is you have more energy in you you have more life in you than if you went out and went out clubbing it's really a choice that we have to make on our own i mean we have to choose what's best for us do you want to go out there consume all that you have to consume and feel so tired or worn out at the end of the day or you want a life a simpler life where you just relax um pray and feel so refreshed at the end of the day let me know what you guys actually think let me get to the last part of this <laughs>